Undeniably, the most important political event in Czechoslovakia after the advent of the Husak leadership in 1969 was the appearance of Charter 77. The spiritual and intellectual climate surrounding its appearance, however, was not the product of any immediate political event. That climate was created by the trial of some young musicians associated with a rock group called the Plastic People of the Universe. Their trial was not a confrontation of two differing political forces or conceptions, but two differing conceptions of life. On the one hand, there was the sterile puritanism of the post-totalitarian establishment, and on the other, unknown young people who wanted no more than to be able to live within the truth, to play the music they enjoyed, to sing songs that were relevant to their lives, and to live freely in dignity and partnership. These people had no past history of political activity. They were not highly motivated members of the opposition with political ambitions, nor were they former politicians expelled from power structures. They had been given every opportunity to adapt to the status quo, to accept the principles of living within a lie, and thus to enjoy life undisturbed by the authorities. Yet, they decided on a different course. Despite this, or perhaps precisely because of it, their case had a very special impact on everyone who had not yet given up hope. Moreover, when the trial took place, a new mood had begun to surface after years of waiting of apathy and of skepticism toward various forms of resistance. People were tired of being tired. They were fed up with the stagnation, the inactivity, barely hanging on in the hope that things might improve after all. In some ways, the trial was the final straw. Many groups, groups of differing tendencies, which until then had remained isolated from each other, reluctant to cooperate, or which were committed to forms of action that made cooperation difficult, were suddenly struck with the powerful realization that freedom is indivisible. Everyone understood that an attack on the Czech musical underground was an attack on the most elementary and important thing, something that in fact bound everyone together. It was an attack on the very notion of living within the truth, on the real aims of life. The freedom to play rock music was understood as a human freedom, and thus as essentially the same as the freedom to engage in philosophical and political reflection, the freedom to write, the freedom to express and defend the various social and political interests of society. People were inspired to feel a general, sen genuine sense of solidarity with the young musicians, and they came to realize that not standing up for the freedom of others, regardless of how remote their means of creativity or their attitude to life, meant surrendering one's own freedom. There is no freedom without equality before the law, and there is no equality before the law without freedom. Charter 77 has given this ancient notion a new and characteristic dimension, which has immensely important implications for modern Czech history. With Slavoshek, the author of the book 68, in a brilliant analysis calls, the principle of exclusion lies at the root of all our present day moral and political misery. This principle was born at the end of the Second World War in that strange collusion of Democrats and Communists and was subsequently developed further and further right to the bitter end. For the first time in decades, this principle has been overcome by Charter 77. All those united in the Charter have, for the first time, become equal partners. Charter 77 is not merely a coalition of communists and non-communists. That would be nothing historically new and from the moral political point of view, nothing revolutionary. But it is a community that is a priori open to anyone and no one in it is a priori assigned to an inferior position. 
This was the climate then in which Charter 77 was created. Who could have foreseen that the prosecution of one or two obscure rock groups would have such far-reaching consequences? I think that the origins of Charter 77 illustrate very well that I have, what I have already suggested above, that in the post-totalitarian system, the real background to the movements that gradually assume political significance does not usually consist of overtly political events of confrontations between different forces or concepts that are openly political. These movements, for the most part, originate elsewhere in the far broader area of the pre-political, where living within a lie confronts living within the truth. That is, where the demands of the post-totalitarian system conflict with the real aims of life. These real aims can naturally assume a great many forms. Sometimes they appear as the basic material or social interests of a group or an individual. At other times, they may appear as certain intellectual and spiritual interests at still other times, they may be the most fundamental of existential demands, such as the simple longing of people to live their own lives in dignity. Such a conflict acquires a political character then, not because of the elementary political nature of the aims demanding to be heard, but simply because, given the complex system of manipulation on which the post-totalitarian system is founded, and on which it is also dependent, every free human act or expression, every attempt to live within the truth must necessarily appear as a threat to the system, and thus as something which is political par excellence. Any eventual political articulation of the movements that grow out of this pre-political hinterland is secondary. It develops and matures as a result of a subsequent confrontation with the system and not because it started off as a political program, project, or impulse. Once again, the events of 1968 confirm this. The communist politicians who were trying to reform the system came forward with their program not because they had suddenly experienced a mystical enlightenment, but because they were led to do so by continued and increasing pressures from all areas of life that had nothing to do with politics in the traditional sense of the word. In fact, they were trying in political ways to solve the social conflicts, which in fact were confrontations between the aims of the system and the aims of life. <clears throat> that almost every level of society had been experiencing daily and had been thinking about with increasing openness for years. Backed by the living resonance throughout society, scholars and artists had defined the problem in a wide variety of ways, and students were demanding solutions. The genesis of Charter 77 also illustrates the special political significance of the moral aspect of things that I've mentioned. Charter 77 would have been unimaginable without that powerful sense of solidarity among widely differing groups, and without the sudden realization that it was impossible to go on waiting any longer, and that the truth had to be spoken loudly and collectively, regardless of the virtual certainty of sanctions and the uncertainty of any tangible results in the immediate future. There are some things worth suffering for, Jan Petotka wrote shortly before his death. I think that Chartists understand this, not only as Petotka's legacy, but also as the best explanation of why they do what they do. Seen from the outside and chiefly from the vantage point of the system and its power structure, Charter 77 came as a surprise, as a bolt out of the blue. It was not a bolt out of the blue, of course, but the impression is understandable since the ferment that had led to it took, took place in the hidden sphere, in the semi-darkness where things are difficult to chart or analyze. The chances of predicting the appearance of the Charter were just as slight as the chances are now of predicting where it will lead. Once again, it was that shock, so typical of moments when something from the hidden sphere suddenly bursts through the moribund surface of living within a lie. The more one is trapped in the world of appearances, 
the more surprising it is when something like that happens.